friends, it's Sonya from Junk Monkey Paint Company. I'm ready to go ahead and begin some fun. I think that you'll enjoy this, especially for creating some art. I'm gonna use some wood blanks that I uh, have cut here in the background. These are just wooden planks. These smudgies of black paint, that's okay, all right? In fact, I'll probably make that the part for my design. So I'm gonna put this to the side, but this is just you know a piece of cheap pine wood. So now the bell of the ball today is gonna be some Mod Podge. This is really, really fun to use. So I buy my Mod Podge at Walmart and I usually go with the matte because I tend to be an old shabby style painter. Basically, I'm gonna lay down a layer of Mod Podge that is going to be the size of my project, okay? So I need a square big enough so that when I put my uh, piece of wood down on it, it's gonna get full coverage with the Mod Podge. I've got my trusty um, Junk Monkey paint, so I have got like my teal, I've got some pink today, Misty Aqua, um, antique lace over here. I had some mocha left, so I'm gonna make use of that. And maybe a little bit of black as well, because you wanna do this process faster rather than slower because you're dealing with Mod Podge, which is a glue. All right, so let's get going. Mod Podge down. Mod Podge down. Mayday, mayday, Mod Podge down. So I make sure it's, it's um, covering a big enough area that when I put my plank down, we're gonna be good to go. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is go ahead and start throwing down some paint. You can do circles and dots. You can do spoonfuls. You can do whatever makes you happy. Uh, in terms of the design that you want to put on here, okay? And what colors you want to make. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle in a little bit of my mocha madness. Colors can definitely project a lot of feeling into your piece, but I'm gonna go with light. So I'm gonna grab some of my uh, Misty Aqua. I've got them like down to the very bottom of my can. We're gonna, I just want a few little flings of that color in here. Antique lace. You could always put a little bit of water with your paint before you do that as well. Like, you know, and if you're trying to like get a certain pattern or black, let's lay it, ooh, I like that. You see how I'm kind of like spinning that around? Like that. A fork is probably not the best thing to get it out with because if you have a spoon, you can scoop better, right? But I'm going for this flingy sort of look. I call this the fling. Yay, look at this, guys. I'm gonna pull you in close real fast so you can see what that's looking like. Right there, right there. All right, ready? Okay, and you're like, what the heck? I tell you, it's like magic. It's magic, people. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my plank. I'm gonna pop it right on top, just like that, okay? Now we're gonna give a press down because we wanna make sure that that um, Mod Podge paint makes contact with our wood plank, all right? So there we go. Now while that's just about ready to pull up, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out that palette knife that I love to use so much. I love it because I love this big angle. Now I've made contact and I'm gonna go ahead and scrape. And that is when, it's like when you put on a tattoo and you now get to reveal it. Yeah, that part was cool what was there before, right? But look at it now. Hello, look at it now. Pretty amazing, right? You see it revealing? Uh, man, it's like the surprise inside. The surprise inside. So you're gonna wanna use something that's nice and flat and then enable you to scrape all that excess off. And then you are left with this really cool design underneath, right? Based on however you did um, your paint droplets, all right? So remember, Mod Podge dries clear. So if your Mod Podge has any of the paint pigment into it, what's gonna happen is, it is going to probably leave that color, so it's gonna look like a gray stain on top of my, my piece, right? So I did some, basically some cross hatching work there. Went one way, and then I go another way. So now I've got that beautiful design in the background, and now I have got this like cross hatching on top of it, and it gives me this really graffiti style. That's what I call it, graffiti style. I'm gonna do the same process again. So we're gonna cross hatch this way, get the Mod Podge off, and then we're gonna do it this way, opposite way as well. And I like that sort of tweed fabric look it gives me. 
so I went ahead and dried this. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it off. So like I said, I went really light with my colors, with my antique lace and my pink, a little bit of the teal river there, and the black is the most predominant. But remember, when you do it, if you want more vivid purples and um, you know your orange and your Bahama jades and your blues, do that. And also, make sure you cover all the area or wherever you want your design, your tattoo we'll call it, uh, to stick, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab, when I look at this here, I let my pieces lead me to like how I finish them off. And so when I see this very whimsical, very free flowing sort of design, I'm thinking free flowing and also I'm thinking, you know, dream catcher. So I went through my stencil book. I think I like this. I could see this on here. Um, I could also see the word like dream or something like that next to it. But for right now, we're just gonna go with something really just classic and simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down. I got this stencil at Hobby Lobby for anybody wondering. I think I'm gonna go a little bit bold. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my black velvet to make this pop. And with the colors I use for um, the background, it's kind of got this like faded but gray into it. You know what I'm saying? So I think black would go really good with it. Peel that off. Oh, that's pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of antiquing around the edges to pull that together and really frame out that tattoo, that backdrop that we just created, that graffiti style background. Now I can distress it a little bit if I want, which I like to do. Just to make everything flow the way I like it. All right, and now the last thing I'm gonna do is seal this. So I'm just gonna grab my monkey shine right now. Go ahead and it'll make those colors pop. I think it's cool how we left that wood natural behind as well. Now those colors are coming back to life. Positively love that actually. Hopefully uh, your mind is open and you're gonna try this and then I would love for you guys to post your projects in Junk Monkey Paint Projects because I cannot wait to see all the colors, the patterns, and what you guys choose to do it on and how you bring it all together. That's what's so cool. The spice of life, remember, everybody's different and sees things different ways and just brings things to life different ways. And so, yay. All right, you guys take care. Bye.